My singular and all-encompassing New Year's resolution for 2023 is to give less fucks. And I'm sorry to the YouTube gods for not bleeping out fucks just then and just then, but if I did, it would be kind of contradictory. So I'm not gonna do that, sorry. And of course it's easier said than done. Like you can't just wake up one day and decide to be a new person, but it's my goal for 2023 to speak to myself with more love and less criticism so that I can build up that foundation of self-confidence so that if the day does come when somebody decides to criticize me unfairly, it won't hit as hard and I won't be shaken because I know who the fuck I am. That's the goal. I've really been wanting to make a large painting for a long time, so I figured that would be the perfect project for this video. I'm going to be talking about my journey with the fucks that I give and list off some actionable steps that I'm going to be taking in 2023 to hopefully give less. And if you're in the same predicament as me, maybe some of these tips will be beneficial to you in your journey of fucklessness. So thank you for joining me. Very happy to have you here. And uh, let's get into it. disclaimer. I feel like I need to put a disclaimer at, at the beginning of every video that I do because I don't know what I'm talking about. But my opinion and my perspective is valuable nonetheless, so let's go. So before I start talking about this, I want to be clear about what I mean by giving less fucks. Um, my goal is not to be indifferent to everything, it's to only give a fuck about the things that actually rationally matter in my life and leave none for the things that don't matter or don't serve me or don't help me in any way. For me, the things that matter are the people in my life, uh, my art practice, my well-being, um, and building my life around my, my goals and achieving my dreams. I feel like in order to actively give less fucks, you need to know what you do give a fuck about so that you can filter out all the extra shit and then let go of it, because it doesn't matter. Number one, you guys, prioritize and rationalize. I feel like perspective is the biggest thing here. Once you know what you really care about, the rest kind of seems small and silly in comparison. But that's not how my little anxious brain works. <laughs> An exercise that has really helped me work out what I should be saving my fucks for in life and what really doesn't deserve any is looking at my biggest fears and deconstructing them to rationalize whether or not they deserve to take up space in my fuck basket. How you can do this, and shout out to my therapist for teaching me this, <laughs> is make a list of things that make you anxious or any irrational fears that you have. For me, it was staying stagnant and petrified my entire life and never making the right moves to achieve my goals or follow my dreams, which really is a fear of choosing the wrong thing or being judged for failing or ending up not being good enough, which was like an endless feedback loop of anxiety, inaction, anxiety, inaction, and it wasn't getting me anywhere. Once you've identified your fear and really tried to get to the core of it, be honest with yourself and imagine yourself as a scared little kid and what you'd be scared of in that sense. Because really that's all most of us are under all of this adult facade bullshit. Ask yourself what the worst outcome, the best outcome, and the realistic outcome would be. With the worst outcome, imagine what would happen if that came true. Imagine your life in the future after the worst outcome happened. Realistically, if the fear is irrational, you'll probably be okay. Take that worst outcome and flush out the irrational fear there. For me, if my life turned out to be a failure, the worst thing that could happen is everyone who I love and care about is disappointed in me and abandons me and everything is terrible forever. Which already sounds a bit dramatic. Like, yes, if everyone I love abandoned me, it would suck a lot, but life would go on and I'd find new people to love because that's just how life goes. And secondly, it's highly, highly unlikely my loved ones would abandon me because I didn't make all of the drawings that I wanted to 
or I didn't end up becoming the successful great artist I wanted to become. Like, that's absurd. <laughs> Seeing our worst outcome, we can start to rationalize why that fear is irrational and start to think about things realistically. Realistically, regardless of what I do with my life, the people in my life will always be there for me because they don't love me because of my achievements. They care about me because I'm me. They don't give a fuck whether or not I succeed or fail in the same way that I don't give a fuck whether they do or not. I know that I'll love them regardless, so I can expect the same from them. Working that out for myself and rationalizing my anxieties was huge for me. It puts things into perspective and it's an amazing first step to giving less fucks. Number two, actively question your immediate thoughts. So struggling with anxiety and fear of judgment doesn't really go away immediately after you're able to rationalize that it isn't an actual threat. If it's something you struggle with, it's gonna take a whole lot of catching yourself thinking in the way that you've been conditioned to think your whole life and trying to rationalize your thoughts every single time they come up. This fear of mine tends to manifest through procrastinating and making myself stagnant so I don't need to make a decision which then gives me more anxiety because I feel mad at myself for not doing the things that I want to do and I'm running out of time to act. So knowing that procrastination is just my anxious little brain trying to avoid something, whenever I get the urge to procrastinate something I really actually want to do, I try to break it down for myself and ask, what negative emotion am I avoiding by procrastinating? And what would someone who doesn't give a fuck about the things that I'm anxious about do in this situation? I usually procrastinate tasks that seem challenging in that moment or projects that I'm afraid will result in disappointment in some way, like the person or client receiving the work will be unhappy with it. So to rationalize those two fears, tasks that are challenging will always be a part of my life and being faced with them is evidence of me trying to better myself or achieve the goals I've set out for myself. I'm afraid of failing the challenge, but out of that failure comes a lesson and I'm better for it, which has been the case for every single challenge I've ever faced. Cause I'm still here. For the fear of disappointing the person that I'm doing work for, I look back at my track record for evidence that I've very, very rarely disappointed with my work, if at all. And if it so happens that for some reason the client isn't happy with my work, then Maybe it just wasn't a good match and they can find another designer that fits their needs a little better and I can find a new client that's a little easier for me to work with. These moments of friction are opportunities for growth and change. And when you decide to only give a fuck about the things that actually matter to you, your life will always improve because of it. Number three, build a foundation of self-love. This is something that I'm really still trying to wrap my head around. All of these items are, if I'm being honest. But self-love is something that's just so foreign to me. I think the way that I've learned to get myself to do things that are hard or challenging is with negative reinforcement. I'll tell myself, stop being so lazy if I feel like I'm being unproductive, or I give myself negative labels if I feel like I've fallen short with something to try and kick myself into gear. My brain has been conditioned over my lifetime to criticize myself about every little thing and therefore when somebody else criticizes me or I feel like I'm being judged, it hits so much deeper because my foundation is already reinforced by negativity. So when I'm faced with that external negativity on top, it's easy to take it personally and just crumble. Positive self-talk builds a foundation of self-confidence and self-esteem so that if external negativity does come your way, it doesn't hit so hard because you know that you love yourself and you can forgive yourself for things. You can spend more time giving a fuck about the things that you care about and be less phased by the things that you can't control. Positive self-talk starts with forgiving yourself and speaking to yourself like you would a loved one. If you fail at something, being able to tell yourself, it's okay, you tried your best, just take this as a lesson, is so, so valuable. It's like having a best friend that's always there for you, but that best friend lives in your body with you and is literally always there with you. <laughs> that's the goal for me. I'm still working on identifying when I do get self-critical and think negatively about myself, 
But when I do catch it, I try my best to correct those thoughts and treat myself with more compassion. If you struggle with this, most likely you're harder on yourself than anyone else is on you. And if anyone is hard on you, that's an extension of how they feel about themselves. That's all it is. I try to remind myself of that often. Number four. Tell yourself you're the shit once a day. The power of speaking out loud, I'm the fucking shit. Affirmations, baby. If you can believe that you are a successful, strong, confident, unique, talented, and intelligent person, then that's what you will become soon enough. This has been a big one for me and my life really feels like it's changing because of it. On top of all the work you can do for yourself in terms of breaking down your fears, practicing self-love and positive self-talk, Affirmations are like a cherry on top that can really give you that push to make you feel great and confident to act on the things that you want to act on and spare no fucks for all of the other shit that tries to get in your way. Especially being a creative person, making things that can be seen and visualized, it's hard not to tie your self-worth closely with the quality of what you can produce or how successful what you produce is. Affirming yourself that you're on the right path you're exactly where you need to be, doing exactly what you need to do, can help give you the reassurance that like, okay, so this piece didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but that's okay because I'm fully on my way to getting to where I want to be. And each meh artwork that you might make is just one more lesson learned, one more step closer to getting to the standard of quality that you hope to achieve. I've been working on a list of affirmations that I come back to when I need them, and I try to read these out to myself every day. I'll always feel a little bit happier and a little more encouraged when I do. I am doing exactly what I should be doing, and I am exactly where I need to be. I believe in myself and trust myself completely. I'm exactly the person I've always dreamed of becoming, and I'm getting better every day. I am glowing with self-love. My perspective is unique, it's important, and it counts. I'm deliberate and afraid of nothing. I'm getting everything I've ever wanted. My dreams are coming true. Today is the best day of the year to do anything I dream of doing. I am courageous, I show up, and I let myself be seen. My ideas are one of a kind. Sharing them is important and so beneficial to the world. And I'm the fucking shit. Bitch. <laughs> What's the swear counter at? <laughs> so here's to a stellar, amazing, fulfilling, incredible, dope as fuck 2023, sending loving vibes to all of y'all. I hope you guys achieve all of the things that you want to do and work past all of the things that are that you're struggling with right now. If you have any tips or any stories that you would like to share about your little journey with your basket of fucks, let's keep it small, a, a little tiny basket of fucks, um, please share them. I would love to hear more. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope my insights were insightful to you. I hope they bring you some value and help you uh, with whatever you're struggling with right now. I myself am very, very, very much a work in progress still, but I feel so good and so empowered to be working on myself like this every day and becoming the best me that I can be for myself. 2023 is going to be a good one. She's going to be monumental. See y'all guys in the next one. Finger guns always to finish off. Okay. Hi. Oh my God, it's just us now. It's just the besties. Hi besties. Um, I'm debating whether or not I wanna leave this in the vlog or put this at the end of my New Year's video. <clears throat> but what does it matter? It's all videos on my channel and I'm all being fucking vulnerable anyways. Um, 
So yeah, anyways, I wanted to do a little debrief slash, hmm, what would this be? Final thoughts, I guess. Um, I had to work through a lot of self-doubt uh, making this video um, just because whenever I, whenever I share advice, I doubt myself in that I'm even like qualified to share advice or like to help people with things because like, who the fuck am I? But working through that, I'm, I'm proud of myself and like I am trying to give myself the credit that like I can speak on these things and I have valuable insights to share. Um, it's also very, <clears throat> very scary being vulnerable uh, for some reason. Being like a positive ray of sunshine is like not my brand <laughs> and it's embarrassing for me and I feel like vulnerable doing that, um, which is strange because that's what I want to be. I want to be a positive ray of sunshine. So yeah, I thought I'd share that. I did this even though I was scared. And so you can do anything that you're scared of doing. Just fucking do it. And believe in yourself, baby. All right. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to say that. <sighs> okay, goodbye for real this time.